Mr. Geller, right this way. <laughs> so, how dark do you want to be? We have one, two, or three. Have you ever thought to yourself, why can't I make a fireball? All I want to do in life is to make the coolest fireball to impress all my friends. Well, boring. That's not any longer. Hello, quips. Pops, looking good. Way yeah, too soon. Amazing. Just a couple. If you ever want a free mansion, huh? You know that could be pretty nice. Today's your lucky day, so come on in. All this can be yours for that low, low price of free. <laughs> what? No way. There has to be a catch. And there's no catch. Well, maybe there's a little bit of a catch. What? Ah, <laughs> uh, what? He might be haunted. Hmm. Is this guy for real? Yeah, I'm totally for real. This place is super haunted, man. I've been trying to get rid of this forever. Just dump it. Just get rid. Wait, you're not. Okay, the guy's clearly a nut job. Everyone knows that ghosts aren't real. <sighs> Am I really about to take advantage of a mentally ill person just to benefit myself? With a picture of the queen on the wall. I would. I like one. How about you? Yeah, I think it's safe to say that I'm officially a horrible person. Ooh. Holy shit. This place is so nice. How the hell did this guy think this place was haunted? Well, that doesn't matter. I guess all that matters now is that I go unpack. Okay, this is definitely where I'm going to stay. What the fuck was that? <sighs> I'm probably just hearing things. <sighs> I am pretty tired after all. Whew. Man, if you had told me when I was a kid that I was going to live in a mansion when I was older, I would have laughed right in your face. You know, this place does remind me a lot of Luigi's Mansion. Mainly because just like Luigi's Mansion, this place is a little bit off. But that's what I like so much about the Luigi's Mansion series. I never thought I would see the day where one of my favorite childhood games would become its own series. Now granted, Luigi's Mansion has gone through some changes since its debut back in 2001, but what hasn't changed is the fact that every game has its own unique atmosphere, game style, and locations. However, these qualities, while important, aren't what makes the Luigi's Mansion series one of my favorite Nintendo franchises. That would be of course the ghosts that dwell within the game. The ghosts are a bulk of what makes Luigi's Mansion, Luigi's Mansion. This is especially the case when it comes to the bosses of Luigi's Mansion. Oh man, does this series have some killer bosses that are super creative, fun, and diverse. You know what, there are so many great bosses from Luigi's Mansion, I think I should make a list of my top 10 favorite Luigi's Mansion bosses. Okay, yeah, let's do it. However, before I start my list, I should clarify a few things. One, this list will include both mini bosses and regular bosses. So that means that any enemy that has a special cutscene or is a unique enemy is fair game. And lastly, this is my opinion. So if there are any bosses that don't make it on my list that someone else thinks should have been included, then they can calmly let me know in the comments below. Anyway, with that in mind, let's talk about my top 10 favorite Luigi's Mansion bosses.
Starting off this list is a boss that I wasn't expecting to have on it, especially since it's my least favorite boss in the original Luigi's Mansion. Now, you might be thinking, are you really about to put King Boo at the number 10 spot? And to that I would say, hell no. I'm not going to put King Boo at the number 10 spot. No, there's another boss from the original Luigi's Mansion that returns in Dark Moon, being Boo Losses. Yeah, that's right, I'm just as surprised as you are that I even included Boo Losses on this list, considering that he is one of the most infamous bosses in the Luigi's Mansion series. However, I will say that while his fight isn't the most enjoyable one in Dark Moon, it's a surprisingly creative boss that actually has a lot of charm and isn't just a reskin of the same ghost like 9% of Dark Moon's bosses are. It gets boring having to fight the same ghost over and over again with little variation to each of its fights. The fact that this is a positive for this boss just shows how lackluster the bosses from Dark Moon are. But that's besides the point. Dark Moon's Boo Losses is actually pretty interesting in the fact that like the original Boo Losses, this one splits up into a bunch of smaller Boos and can be popped just like it could be in the first game. However, the big change with this Boo Losses that makes this one more enjoyable and memorable is the fact that you don't have to chase the Boos around a massive arena to capture them, but instead you have to shoot them into a moving toy train. Which is actually not only pretty fun, but is also unique. This is way better than having to chase around all the boos, hit them with ice, and then vacuum them up before they form back into boo losses. So, even though I really don't like a majority of Dark Moon's bosses, I will admit that it does have the superior boo losses fight that actually makes this fight fun and gives it some replayability. My next choice might be one that you wouldn't expect to see on this list because it isn't that interesting of a fight when compared to the other bosses later on. I purely put Supi on here because of the mystery behind her fight and some personal reasons. Supi is one of the optional hidden bosses in the original Luigi's Mansion that a lot of people miss out on on their first playthroughs. For me personally, it's definitely one of the most memorable bosses because of this journey you have to go on to even get the chance to fight her. In order to find Supi, you have to do some exploring. First you'll need to go to the roof and go down this chimney here to find a hidden room that once completed will give you access to Supi's room. As I've mentioned in another video I made about Luigi's Mansion, one of my favorite things about the original game is the fact that exploration is such a big factor. So the fact that there's a boss that kind of revolves around exploration is pretty damn cool. I honestly don't even think that the fight itself is that interesting. All you really have to do is spray her with water, dodge her toy clowns, vacuum her up, and then rinse and repeat until you drain her health to zero. This fight really isn't that unique, but because the game went so out of its way to hide this boss, it makes this fight feel more special than it really is. And it's not like I hate this fight or anything, I mean, if I did, it wouldn't be on my list. I really do like the atmosphere and gimmick with this fight. I always thought it was interesting that this little girl was the only portrait ghost that had the ability to flip her room upside down. So while this fight is pretty basic, there's so many other things going for it that it makes up for its repetitiveness. So, this might piss off some people, but you know what, I piss off people on a regular basis when it comes to some of my top 10s, so this should be expected by now if you've seen enough of my videos. So I guess I'll just say it, I'm putting Chauncey at the number 8 spot. Now I know that a good amount of people like Chauncey and that he probably should be higher on my list, but you have to understand something important. I have played the original Luigi's Mansion so many times that I really don't enjoy a lot of the bosses from this game as much as I used to purely because of how many times I've fought them. For me to really like a boss from the original Luigi's Mansion, it has to have a lot going for it. This is especially the case with Chansey. While this fight does have some interesting concepts and is visually the best looking boss in the game, his fight is one of the most repetitive ones in the whole game. Something that I find to be extremely important for bosses is whether or not they have replayability. Meaning that a boss should have enough variation with its fight that you can replay through the game again and get a different experience with said boss. This is not the case with Chansey because of the very specific attack pattern that he follows. Every single time I fight Chansey, it always feels exactly the same with no variation in his gameplay and no unexpected twists and turns like some of the other bosses later on this list. Despite his repetitive gameplay, the overall atmosphere is what I really like about Chansey. 
The moments leading up to a fight are genius. Having a cutscene play before even going to the baby's room builds suspense for those who have never played the game before. And once you get into the room, there's an eerie silence that makes the nursery actually feel haunted. And after you wake Chansey up, you can easily defeat him in the real world because, well, he's a fucking baby. But once he shrinks you down and you get into the actual fight, this is where his childlike whimsy comes into play that makes his fight really special. Using these normally ineffective rocking horses and bouncy balls to hurt you is pretty cool especially when not even a minute ago, these items barely hurt Luigi. And on top of that, you're fighting him on his crib, which makes this fight even more surreal than it already is. Overall, I love everything surrounding Chansey's fight, but I actually don't like the fight itself because there isn't enough variation with Chansey's gameplay. Okay, so this boss is an interesting one because of how unusual it is when compared to the other bosses from the original Luigi's Mansion. Most portrait ghosts have some interesting gimmicks with their fights, but none of them are quite like Henry and Orville's gimmick. Henry and Orville are interesting for two reasons, the game you play with them, and their fight. For those unfamiliar with the game I'm talking about, in order to be able to find Henry and Orville, you have to beat them in a game of hide and seek. What makes this game so cool is the fact that their hiding spots are random every single time you fight them, so you rarely get the same game of hide and seek when replaying through the game. Even though the game wants you to use the fire element to find the twins, you technically don't have to use it to do so. When I was a kid, I wasn't smart enough to think to use the fire element to find them, so I ended up resetting the room over and over again until I randomly found both of them. So technically there are a few different ways to play this game of hide and seek, but I would highly recommend you not to try to find them without fire because that's dumb and a waste of time. So already this boss has a lot going for it, but what makes this boss even more enjoyable is the fact that there are two different strategies to fight Henry and Orville. Since you're a double boss, you can either capture Henry first and then Orville, or vice versa, making this fight one of the more complex ones because of the multiple different strategies and methods you can do to handle this boss. Interestingly enough, this fight is surprisingly similar to one of Dark Souls' most famous boss duos, Ornstein and Smo, if that tells you anything about how creative of a concept this is. In summary, what makes this fight interesting and one of my favorite ones from the original Luigi's Mansion is the fact that there's a lot of variety in this fight, making it so you'll have a different encounter with the twins every time you fight them, and that's pretty damn cool. Okay, so we're at the point where my list becomes a little more predictable, but I can't help it if some of my favorite bosses are universally loved by the community, and I will say that King McFrights is one of those iconic bosses. Out of all the mini boss ghosts in Luigi's Mansion 3, King McFrights is by far the most interesting one with its wonderful atmosphere that is unlike any other boss from the Luigi's Mansion series, its more difficult and intense gameplay, and its great use of some of Luigi's new power-ups. I love how much is going on in this fight. Having a cutout audience watch Luigi fight King McFrights is not only kind of funny, but it's also pretty damn fitting for the theme of the floor and makes the stakes for this fight feel higher than they actually are. I also like that when you hurt King McFrights, the audience boos. And out of all the contraptions in Luigi's Mansion 3, King McFrights' horse is by far the best one of them all. I mean, just look at how absurd this thing is when compared to some of the other boss's accessories. However, my favorite thing about it has to be the fact that once you stun King McFrights, you literally throw him around the arena with a fucking plunger. I think the reason why I like this fight so much is because of how over the top it is. It's definitely one of the most comical fights in the game, while at the same time being one of the more difficult ones that, when you take away all the goofiness from it, is an old fashioned battle to the death. I feel like this fight has some of the most thought and effort put into it out of all the mini bosses in the game. However, just like Chauncey, King McFright's fight doesn't have that much replayability because there isn't a lot of variation with his fight since there's only one method of fighting him. Because of that, I can't put King McFright's any higher on my list. What the hell was that?
the dude from the commercial. Creepy. Ugh. What was that? Going crazy? I could have just sworn I saw someone. Holy shit, this place is fucking haunted! No, 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 no! <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Okay. So, it's obvious that I'm about to get killed here, but could you at least let me finish my top 10 before you kill me? You will? Great. Now, where was I? Oh yeah, I was just about to talk about my fifth favorite boss being the giant spider. This is honestly the only unique boss from Dark Moon that stands out to me. The giant spider is such a cool idea that I wish more of Dark Moon's bosses were like. What makes this boss so iconic is the fact that there's no other boss from the Luigi's Mansion series that is anything like this one. Instead of actually fighting the spider and finding an opening to attack it, you have to figure out how to solve a series of puzzles to expose the ghost hiding inside of it. I honestly don't know why there aren't more bosses like this one because Luigi's Mansion is known for its unique puzzles and problem solving gameplay. The puzzle in the second phase in particular was probably my favorite one because of how intricate it was. You not only have to try to solve this rather complicated puzzle, but you also have to deal with dodging other spiders as well as the giant spider's attacks. On top of that, the arena you fight the spider in is super cool and actually feels pretty creepy with all the spiders crawling around as well as the knight statues that can attack you when you get too close to them. And the animations in this fight give the spider life. I mean, look at how frantically it's trying to put out this fire. It's just so damn charming and I love it. Okay, so you're probably thinking, why isn't this boss higher on my list? Well, the reason why it isn't any higher is because of one glaring issue. Being that once you solve the puzzles, the boss's fight loses its initial charm and becomes more repetitive in future playthroughs because you already know how to solve all the puzzles. While I do love puzzle bosses in first playthroughs, I start to not like them as much when I replay through a game multiple times because there's no variation with its gameplay. Every fight with it feels the same and starts to feel more like I'm doing a chore instead of playing a game. So as much as I do like the giant spider's concept, I just don't think there's enough unique attributes to make this fight as fun as it was in my first playthrough. Okay, so this is probably my last boss that I bet none of y'all were expecting to see on my list because to be honest, I don't know whether people like this boss or not. But for whatever reason, I actually really like Nikki, Lindsay, and Guinea quite a bit. Now, this might be surprising to some of y'all since this boss is one of the more simplistic ones in Luigi's Mansion 3, but I think this boss has a lot going for it. First of all, I love Nikki, Lindsay, and Guinea's gimmick a lot. When I was a kid, I would fantasize about making my own portrait ghost that I think would be cool to see in the mansion, and one of those fan-made portrait ghosts just so happened to be a magician because I thought that a magician ghost would have been really cool to see and would fit right in with the other portrait ghosts. So when I saw that they actually made a magician boss, I was ecstatic to see its fight. And let me tell you, it did not disappoint. What makes this boss so fun for me personally is their Russian Roulette style combat. During the first phase of the fight, it feels like a standard Luigi's Mansion boss. But things get interesting whenever you capture one of the sisters because once you do, there are still three hats you have to deal with. But one of the hats is a fake one. Which is so cool, because not only is this a fight where you have to dodge attacks, but you also have to keep track of which hats have sisters inside of them. And then once you get rid of another sister, there's only one hat with a sister in it and two fake hats on the field. 
However, the best part about this fight is the fact that you can capture the sisters in any order you want to, giving you several different ways to fight this boss. On top of that, the hats shuffle around randomly every single phase, so you'll never get the same fight twice, which makes this somewhat simplistic fight more complex than it appears to be. Now that I think about it, this fight is actually a lot like Henry and Orville's fight, but there's randomness throughout the entire fight and the combat is a lot more engaging this time around because of all of Luigi's new moves. So yeah, it's safe to say that I really like this underrated boss. At this point, it should be pretty obvious that King Boo is on my list considering that he's in the thumbnail. However, you still don't know which King Boo fight is my favorite one. Spoiler alert, it isn't Luigi's Mansion 3's iteration, and it definitely isn't Dark Moon's iteration. Yeah, my favorite King Boo fight is the original one from the original Luigi's Mansion. There are so many things that make this fight stand out to me and many others that it's not even funny. Everything from the fight's atmosphere to the actual gameplay itself is done perfectly. However, the main thing that makes this fight so iconic is the fact that King Boo is using Bowser's carcass to fight you. Yes, you heard me right. King Boo is in fact using Bowser's powers to fight you. Oh, you don't believe that King Boo is using Bowser's carcass in this fight? Well, I'll just leave this right here for you to look over, and then let me know if you still think that King Boo isn't using Bowser's carcass. That aside, I seriously can't believe that Nintendo even did this considering how lighthearted Luigi's Mansion is. Well, for the most part anyway. This is such a cool concept that I kinda want Nintendo to visit again in the future, but I have a feeling they never will. Having Bowser and King Boo team up for the final fight in the game is probably one of my favorite Nintendo moments of all time because of how well this duo works, how it's just the right amount of difficulty, and because this fight is just so much fun. Now, it would be one thing that the fight wasn't good, but it is in my opinion the most fun fight from the original Luigi's Mansion. And the best part is that there's actually variation with this fight. Even though it might not look like it initially, there are a few different ways to fight King Boo. You can either take your time and slowly dwindle his health down, or you could speedrun his fight and entirely skip his second phase. Now, whether or not this was intentional doesn't really matter, because at the end of the day, you're still able to do it. Well, if you're a skilled enough player, that is. I just wish that the other versions of King Boo had as much originality as this one does, because to me, the last two King Boo fights felt pretty bland and didn't really have that much charm. Maybe this is just me, but I really don't like the changes that Nintendo has made with King Boo's fight in Dark Moon and Luigi's Mansion 3. So, in summary, this version of King Boo is the superior one because of its unique gameplay, its dark and disturbing concept, and its shockingly wonderful replayability. Alright, we have made it to my two favorite bosses that I would say have gone above and beyond just being good. While these choices might be extremely predictable, it doesn't change the fact that they are damn good bosses that I would say are in my top 50 bosses of all time. And trust me, that's a pretty high compliment. For my standards anyway. Oh god, I just sounded like the biggest prick of all time. <coughs> anyway, it's time to talk about my second favorite boss from Luigi's Mansion being Skeleton T-Rex and Ugg from Luigi's Mansion 3. Okay, I have so much to say about this boss, I don't even know where to start. I guess I'll start by saying that this is the most dynamic boss in the series. This is not just unlike any other boss from the Luigi's Mansion series, I would go as far as to say that this boss is really unlike any other Nintendo boss. Why do I say this? Well, for starters, it's similar to a puzzle boss in the sense that you need to solve a series of somewhat difficult puzzles during the first phase of the fight, like a normal puzzle boss, but then the second phase is where it starts to get interesting. All of a sudden, the T-Rex gets loosed from its display and turns into an all-out battle with you and the T-Rex. Having a boss go from a puzzle boss to a more traditional one was not at all what I was expecting with this fight. Now, why this is so interesting for me personally is because the T-Rex doesn't follow a specific path and will do an assortment of random attacks. 
giving it a lot of variety with its gameplay in contrast to the first phase of the fight only having one way of progressing. Normally I would say that this would get boring after multiple playthroughs, but because this puzzle is so bizarre and clever, making wonderful use of Guiji, I honestly think that this could be the one exception to my major gripe with puzzle bosses. On top of it having a really cool fight, it also has an amazing design. I mean, come on, you're fighting a T-Rex that's possessed by a ghost. I really don't think it gets any more badass than that. However, I have one little gripe with this boss that prevents it from being my favorite one in the whole series. The third phase of this fight. While everything with the T-Rex is nearly perfect, Ugg himself is a sharp contrast with his slower and more monotonous gameplay. While there's constantly something going on with the T-Rex phases of the fight, Ugg's phase of the fight has a lot of waiting around and avoiding very easy to dodge attacks. However, I will admit that Ugg has one really cool thing going for him and that is that he's super intuitive. What do I mean by this? Well, in the cutscene for the third phase, you could see him slam his bone weapon into the ground and it gets stuck, implying that this would be a good time to stun him without the game directly telling you this is a good time to stun him. Other than that, this third phase is a pretty big letdown. It's such a shame that this boss gets hindered by this lame ending. If the fight was just a T-Rex, this boss would have easily been my number one boss and would probably be in my top 10 favorite bosses. But because Ugg is a part of this fight, I simply can't put it at the number one spot. Well, here we are. We finally made it to my favorite boss in all of Luigi's Mansion. If you've played every game in the series, then you know exactly who my number one choice is. But just in case you don't know, I'll give you a little hint. He is one of the main bosses from Luigi's Mansion 3. Do you know who it is? No, you don't? Well, let me tell you. It's Melody's way cooler distant cousin, Amadeus Wolfgeist. Amadeus Wolfgeist is not only by far the most creative boss in the Luigi's Mansion series, but it is also the most fun, action-packed, and bizarre bosses in all of Luigi's Mansion. I have played a lot of video games and I have never seen a boss quite like this one. For starters, the structure of this boss fight does not follow the traditional model for a Nintendo boss, let alone any boss for that matter. Just in case you're wondering how many phases this boss has because I wasn't sure at first, it technically has four fucking phases. Yes, you heard me right. A Nintendo boss has four phases. Not even King Boo has four phases. To really understand how cool this is, let's briefly look at each phase. The first phase, while quick, is Amadeus Wolfgeist throwing random chairs at you in sync to the song he's playing. Little side note, the order of the chairs he throws at you are random every single fight. Which, I think at this point, you should know how I feel about that. Okay, back to his other phases. His second phase consists of a horde of common ghosts dancing to his music, which isn't that special and is in my opinion the weakest phase of the fight. His third phase, however, is where things start to get interesting. This is where he possesses his piano and goes Super Mario 64 on your ass. He will do an assortment of random attacks that all have to do with music, which is super creative and a lot of fun. And his final phase is when you've broken his piano and he's desperately trying to kill you before you can capture him. I love this fight so fucking much. I honestly can't find a single flaw with Amadeus Wolfgeist other than the fact that I'm not a fan of horde fights in the middle of a boss fight, which isn't even that bad considering that it's over before it even started. Speaking of time, what is really cool about the structure of this fight is the fact that the phases all vary in time meaning that the amount of time spent in each phase isn't evenly distributed like they typically are supposed to be. But what makes this even cooler is the fact that he isn't even trying to attack you in the first two phases of the fight because he would rather play music than deal with you. It's when his plans fail that he directly intervenes, which just so happens to be when the longest phase of the fight occurs. And there's even more with this fight. You see Amadeus Wolfgeist get visibly more pissed off at you throughout the whole fight and then eventually realizes that he lost and desperately is trying to kill you with his last counterattack. Oh man, I wish that every boss in Luigi's Mansion was like this. No, I wish that 
every Nintendo boss had this much thought and effort put into them because this is not just a boss. This is truly a work of art. And the thing is, I still have so much more I could talk about with this boss, like it's super quirky design, it's wonderful level layout, the music during the fight, and the wide variety of different power-ups you have to use during this fight. Amadeus Wolfgeist really is the closest thing you can get to being a perfect boss in my opinion. I would honestly go as far as to say that this boss could be in my top 5 favorite bosses of all time. Thank you for letting me finish my list. Now, what would be really nice is if you let me leave and act like this never- <laughs> Jack, missed you today. Just another day of cocktailing, shelling helms. Toast to whoever's running around in here. Creepy bastard. I ain't crazy. <laughs> <laughs>